Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com and today we are going to do an important topic that is basics of beta. Important question, uh, sometimes we call it CAPM, right? This topic has been repeated multiple times in the previous exams, in the risk manager, in credit manager and also in financial analyst exams, right? So this class uh, we are doing for Central Bank of India, risk manager, credit manager and finan uh, financial analyst 2023 exam. The exam is going to be held in the month of April, I guess 16th of April. Okay. So first of all, what is beta? <clears throat> beta is a measure of volatility or systematic risk. So what is a systematic? We'll, let's just do the difference of systematic and unsystematic risk before getting digging uh, deep into the topic. So what is a systematic risk and what is the unsystematic risk? Systematic risk is inherent to the entire market equities. Okay, sari ki sari economy pe jo risk hai, that is a systematic risk. For example, the risk due to COVID, the overall demand declined during the COVID. So that impacted the whole economy that impacted the COVID impacted the uh, all the industries, right? Except healthcare and uh, pharma industry. So that was a systematic risk. Okay. Uh, so it can also be known as market risk, you cannot mitigate it or you cannot reduce this risk with the help of diversification. Okay. So what is diversification? Let's assume you have one crore rupee in your account. Okay. So you want to invest your money. So you invested in debt instruments, for example, some of the money you invested 50 lakh rupees in debt. Okay. Uh, you invested 30 lakhs in stocks, you bought stocks of various companies, okay, uh, 30 lakhs, and then you bought gold uh, of like 20, 12, uh, 20 lakhs, okay. So in case the stock market crashes, and it declines by 50%, uh, 50%, right? So you lose only 15 lakh rupees, okay, but in case you have invested the entire one crore rupee in stock market, and the market crashed by 50%, you lose 50% of your portfolio. So that is diversification, diversification leads to lower risk. Okay, so high diversification means lower the risk, less diversification means higher the risk. So remember that this is also an important question from examination point of view. Take okay? care. What is unsystematic risk? Unsystematic risk is a company specific risk. Let me give you an example. Uh, do you remember the Chandha Kochar case? So the CEO or the MD, MD of ICICI Bank, MD of ICICI Bank. Uh, she was in a, you know, case she gave a loan to Videocon. Okay. And the MD of Videocon gave some money to the Chanda Kochar's husband, right? So there was a case against ICICI Bank. That is why the, you know, ICICI did performed really bad in the two years. So there were NPAs and the people were skeptical of uh, investing or keeping their money with ICICI bank. So that was a company specific risk that risk was associated with ICIC bank only there was no risk with HDFC there was no risk involved with excess bank. Okay. So in case you have diversified in case your portfolio is diversified. If you have to invest your money in banking sector, if you have invested your money in ICICI, HDFC and excess banks, then your risk might be lower. Okay. So unsystematic risk can be reduced with the help of portfolio diversification. Okay. So I gave you a good example that is a real life example. Okay, this can be asked in your exam. So that is the difference between systematic and unsystematic risk. So let's get back to what is beta. So beta is a measure of volatility or systematic risk, uh, systematic risk or market risk of a security portfolio compared to market as a whole. Okay, so it is a measure of volatility or measure of risk volatility volatility means what volatility means risk. Uh, let's say there is a share of HDFC bank, so which is not moving that much and it is giving you a return of let's say 13 14 percent uh, during last five years and then there is uh, AU small finance bank the AU small finance bank which is moving like this okay so which is moving like this so obviously there is a higher volatility 
in AU Small Finance Bank than HDFC Bank. Okay, so there is a proper method to measure it. Okay, that's what we are going to do. So beta is what beta is a measure of volatility or measure of risk. Uh, which risk systematic risk of a security or uh, portfolio compared to market as a whole. Okay. So how to interpret the beta? How would you interpret that? So beta of more than one uh, beta of more than one. So uh, beta of one means market risk. Beta of one means that is the risk of market. In case of Indian stock market, uh, the beta of nifty 50 is one the beta of nifty 50 is one that means the that is the market risk if a securities beta is let's say 1.2 that means what that means it is riskier than nifty 50 it has higher volatility than nifty 50 the shares are riskier than market in case the nifty rises by 10 percent uh, nifty rises by 10 percent then this particular uh, stock, let's say this is ICICI bank. This is let's say, oh, just a second. This is ICICI bank. This is ICICI bank. If Nifty 50 rises by 10%, the shares of ICICI bank should rise by 12%. Okay. On other side, if the if Nifty 50 declines by 10%, okay the shares of ICICI would decline by 12%. Okay, so this is a basic interpretation of the beta. Uh, on the flip side, if beta is less than one, if beta of a stock is 0.8, that means the risk of this particular security is lower than the market. The beta of zero means there is no correlation to the market. Okay, the beta of zero it means there is no correlation with the market it is difficult to find a stock which has no correlation with the market but often it helps uh, to diversify the beta of uh, gold to nifty 50 normally it's uh, 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 okay so the beta what is the purpose of beta beta helps you to diversify your portfolio okay let's move forward uh, this type of risk is avoidable through proper diversification. This question has been repeated like multiple times, like a number of times. I mean, I am seeing this question for like a lot of times, which type of risk is avoidable through proper diversification, portfolio risk, systematic risk, unsystematic risk or the total risk. We are talking about unsystematic risk can be which is a company specific risk can be avoided through proper diversification okay i hope that is pretty clear this question is very popular in the exam so to calculate the beta er which is expected return rate of return of a stock rf means risk free return so if you are investing your money in the government bond the sovereign bonds the return that you're getting is risk free return. There is no risk involved. B means beta, RM means market return and RF means risk free return. Okay. So uh, market return that may be the in India, I mean, you can take a case of um, the nifty 50 return that can be the market return. Okay. Find the beta for a stock ABC, given that the expected rate, uh, expected return on the stock ABC is 13.45 and the expected return on the portfolio is 16.2 and risk free return is 7%. Use this formula. You can, you need to remember the formula ER. This is the formula ER expected rate of return is equal to risk free return plus beta brackets. Uh, the market return minus risk free return. So market return minus risk free return. That means uh, the premium, the market premium. Okay. So we got uh, expected rate of return that is 13.45. We got the risk free return that is seven. We need to find out the beta. The market rate of return is 13.45. Uh, risk free return is 7% I guess, right? So uh, what do you got? <coughs> you got uh, that is 16.2 minus risk free return 7. Okay, so 13.45 is equal to 7 plus beta 16.2 minus 7. 
that was 9.2 okay so 13.45 minus 7 is equal to beta 9.2 so this comes out to be uh, 6.45 divided by 9.2 that's a uh, beta so how much it is you need you can calculate that that will be around 0 0.7 okay 0 0.7 that is our answer very easy question the next question the cost of equity for a firm with beta uh, beta is 1.5 uh, risk free return is 6 percent expected return on the market portfolio is 15 percent you need to find out uh, the cost of equity you need to find out er so er is equal to risk free return plus beta uh, market return minus risk free return okay so risk free return is 6 percent beta is 1.5 Market return is 15% minus the 6% risk free return. 6 plus uh, 1.5, you can easily do that. That's 9. So that's 13.5 plus 6. That comes out to be 19.5. Okay. No need to do that many calculations. You can easily do that. But for you, I'm doing this. Uh, very, very common questions in the exams. What proportion of a firm is equity financed? A weighted average, I'll do a proper session on weighted average cost of capital. Tomorrow I'm going to do that. So stay updated. Weighted average cost of capital is 14%. Before tax cost of debt is 10.77%. Tax rate is 35%. And required rate on equity is 18%. Students cost of debt is 10.77%. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. You need to understand one thing that uh, the tax rate the cost of debt the interest on debt is interest uh, uh, the is interest is part of the profit and loss account so uh, you can you know uh, claim deduction in the profit and loss account when you make the profit and loss account interest is there in the expense side okay so uh, you got the benefit on that okay there is a tax benefit so cost of equity is 18% cost of equity is 18% cost of debt is not 10.77% you get the tax benefit as well. So there is 35% tax on income you pay taxes, the expenses that you make, uh, you claim the benefit. Okay, so let's assume that uh, you made a profit of let's say 1 lakh rupees okay you have to pay 20 percent tax on that 20,000 rupee you have to pay otherwise you paid 50,000 as interest now your net profit is 50,000 you need to pay 20 percent of 50,000 so I hope you understood the concept okay so cost of actual cost of debt the final cost of debt is 10.77 percent multiplied by 1 minus 0.35 so that is 0.65 multiplied by 10.77 so that comes out to be seven percent seven percent is the cost of debt 18 percent is the cost of equity okay so equity is here i hope you have done the allegation method so if you have not done let me just uh, do that for you equity 18 percent the debt is seven percent uh don't look average the weighted average is 14 percent so 18 minus 14 is 4 14 minus 7 is 7 so equity ka weightage is 7, debt ka weightage is 4. So how much is the weightage? What proportion of uh, the firm is equity financed? It is 7 over 7 plus 4, 11. 7 over 11 uh, or 63-ish percent, I guess. That is the answer. 63.64, that is your answer, okay? I hope you understood that. If there is any doubt, please ask your doubts, okay? Find the required rate of return for equity investors. Uh, with a beta of 1.3% of a firm with a beta of 1.3% risk free return is there market premium is there. So ER expected return is equal to risk free return plus beta uh, market return minus risk free return market return minus risk free return means market risk premium that is 5% beta is 1.3 risk free return is 5% so 5 plus Eight, that comes out to be 13% very easy question okay very easy
So I've seen these questions multiple times in the exam. That is why I'm teaching you this today. Central Bank of India Credit Manager, Risk Manager and Financial Analyst 2023 course is available on bankexamstudy.com. Students, all the links are available in the description. We are providing the complete video classes, the notes, the test series, the power capsules, the live sessions and the interview preparation guidance on bankexamstudy.com. Complete coverage of the syllabus is there. This is our WhatsApp number. The courses are available on our mobile apps on the iOS and the Android apps. Please check the apps and join the course as soon as possible. If there is any doubt in your mind, call us or drop us a WhatsApp message. List of our successful students who took our courses in the past and they cracked their respective exams. I'm really, really happy for them. All these students who took our courses in the past and they cracked their respective exams and I'm really, really happy for them. If there is any doubt in your mind, please ask your doubts and we are going to answer all your doubts, okay? So that's all for today, students. Thank you and have a very, very nice day. Uh, subscribe the channel and like this video. Mm, thank you and have a very nice day. Bye-bye.